Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor, and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, identity, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And it is Monday, May the 17th, 2021. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 97. Countdown to our big 100 episode, which is going to be a, a, a special that we are preparing for you. Anyhow, I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hi, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Okay, this week, I, you know, in the past, we've uh, talked about different art movements and everything, and so I was trying to decide, okay, we've talked about the Renaissance, we've talked about Expressionism, we've talked about Impressionists, so I was going through some uh, lists, and I came across a funny word. It's a French word. I will probably mispronounce it. I think it's pronounced fauvism. Did I say that right, Diane? The heck? Yeah, I get, yeah. <laughs> That's how most people pronounce it. <clears throat> Can Google it. It is a it is a uh, art movement that was predominantly led by uh, Henri uh, Matisse, and it was the uh, first uh, 20th century avant-garde uh, European uh, art movement and actually uh, according to what I found on online uh, phobism stands for the wild beast but when you look at the type of art with the bright colors and things what's so wild about it uh, so Diane tell us about phobism well um, <laughs> Henry Matisse he kind of rebelled, I guess, against the establishment as far as the way art was always done and what the way it was being taught in the you know, schools at the time. And he didn't want to, uh, he wanted to branch out from the way everything was always done. So he started using paint right out of the tube, you know, bright colors, not really mixing colors and on a palette. He was just, just applying it to the canvas the way it came out. And he was, um, using some elements of pointillism to try, you know, to get uh, movement in the paintings and the colors to move and change. So it was a whole new um, way of painting than what had been done before. So it was really, um, <laughs> it, it was revolutionary, I guess, at the time, but it was really put down. I mean, all the um, critics and even the people that came into the galleries and stuff laughed at him and made fun of the way you know, it looked and um, really didn't 
uh, give him much uh, credit for <laughs> coming up with something different. So it was really hard for him. He he uh, suffered through that. It was it it's really takes a lot of guts to do that, especially when you're um, counting on selling your paintings for your living. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, and he wasn't selling very much because nobody liked you know wanted liked it. They didn't like the style. It was so. very avant garde. For our, right. I, I forgot. Uh, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, talkartpodcast.com, there is a really uh, uh, wonderful uh, link there from uh, Artsy that uh, describes in detail, long reading uh, to a website that, that describes Fauvism and Henry, uh, Henry uh, Matisse. There's also a BBC uh, video about uh, Henry Matisse. Uh, but for uh, for your further information, if you're interested in this whole business, but uh, as always, Diane took took one of the things I was going to say when you talked about <laughs> uh, just like with the impressionists, the uh, the art critics at the time. This is in the early you know, 1900, 1904, 1905. Um, they gave the name Fauvism as an insult. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be an insult. Yeah, and I also. I read some other material that uh, the um, uh, along with that, but some historians have tried to claim that uh, Fauvism really wasn't an art movement. It was just like a in between, you know, in between uh, Cubism and Pointillism. More of a transition between the two. And, but it, but in reality, it was a. And, and there were there were like only maybe two or three other artists who were doing the same type of work that could, you could call Fauvism. But um, uh, Matisse was the main, uh, the, the, the main motivator, the main uh, pusher of the, you know, he's, he's in fact, he stuck with it all the way up through, uh, through the fifties. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, Constance, what's, uh, what's, what's your uh, comments on this? I really like his work. Um, it was it was very daring. I mean, when he first started painting that way, you could see him really struggling to find his way through it because his he left a lot of white on the canvas and just really <clears throat> put the colors not even touching each other, trying to figure out how he wanted to solve it out, you know. And um, he it was like he was struggling to figure out how he wanted to paint that way and this you know to, and then really worked at it but um he had another he went to one place what was the first place he went to in to this corsica's where he first started he got married and went to corsica to for the so for his honeymoon but then uh, the next year after his wife's family got messed up financially the next time he went to a different place, which was more, less expensive, but I don't know. They said it was covered in mosquitoes or something, but he liked it because it was beautiful there. Um, and another man came and stayed with him while he was there. And they both painted. And what's his Durand. name? Andre Durand? Is that what his name was? Yeah. And... Uh, but a lot of those paintings that he did, he did painted a lot while he was down there, and the paintings were really expressive, very expressive. I thought. Also outstanding, like you said, the bright colors. Mm -hmm. and I'm mistaken, you know, because the impressions, that's what they were for. To the, me, it just looked like he really solved out, solved all of his, his uh, what he was trying to solve while he was trying to move into that direction of painting that way that he wanted to just find himself it looked like he really did find himself painting that way. The painting of his wife with the hat. And then they all made fun of him. So he did another painting of her and just with the green line down her, the front of her <laughs> face and a, paint, a portrait of himself too after that. And it was very, to me, just very brave to do that, you know, and just like, you don't like that, fine. I'm just gonna paint that way anyway. This is the way I feel like painting. And I think it is brave to the face of people putting you down for painting that way yep. you know i mean you have to paint what you feel not try to 
and that and every artist goes through that struggle that is a struggle to paint the way that you want to instead of painting the way you think people want you to you know it, it is a struggle well what i was going to uh, say about with, with regards to the colors he grew up in uh, northern france which was uh -huh. very bland very industrial and this was the the amazing thing of how he uh you know was picked up with you know with the colors and like you said he went to corsica that was a bright, beautiful area that inspired him. And then he went down to southern France for a while. And that, you know, was all bright. And was, but predominantly, he spent most of his life in northern France. In a very yeah, close to Belgium. And it was like a farming and industrial area. And they had cut down all the trees for farming and stuff. And, and I understand that. They did that here in Oklahoma, out in the country. You know, that's all prairie and stuff. There's not many trees here. And the wind just blows the dirt out. <laughs> that's what created the dust bowl you know so yeah and when the skies are gray here it's really dull looking you know so yeah i understand it's gray and muddy and so diane what did you think about that uh, bbc uh, documentary i really liked it because <clears throat> excuse me a lot of it um was his, his granddaughter great granddaughter that was talking Clear if that was is that I think that was his great granddaughter because great granddaughter one of his son she was yes yes she was a granddaughter of one of his sons uh, Pierre yeah okay so it would be mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it was interesting like hearing her point of view and how um, you know things she grew up with and you know <laughs> hearing about the stories and the you know the background kind of stories family stories and things that went along with the paintings. And um, she visited a lot of the different places that he had mm -hmm. painted and stuff. And it was, um, you know, she could see, like, where exactly he, like, the one that she had painted his wife on the rocks. And she got all emotional because, you know, she could see the rocks were the same. Like, she could see exactly where she had been sitting and, yeah. you know, where he had been standing to paint her like that. So it was kind of... Um, touching i guess you know that she got to um experience that and she yeah she had been in, in the apartment in france where i used to use mm -hmm. a, a slingshot and slingshot pan yeah. <laughs> down to the uh, market down the main on the main you know by the river that yeah. was funny <laughs> mm -hmm. and nice she told like insider family stories you know that she had yeah. a, mm -hmm. not her great grandfather and uh the um uh, I liked when she told the story that uh, he uh, he 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 studied as a lawyer. First of all, yeah, he could be a lawyer. He studied to be a lawyer, and then his family had a had a grain store. They had shops or something. And mm -hmm. while he was a kid, him and his brothers, you know, were expected to work in the shop, and they just absolutely hated that, you know. And he got sick or something. Yeah, he was sick and in bed for a while. And his mother, to keep him in bed, because he kept wanting to get up, she got him, bought him a small paint kit. Uh -huh. paint, and that's what got him started. He, you know, he, he, it was like, it opened up a whole new world to him. You know? And it made me think about so many of uh, how important our, you know, our parents and our grandparents can be to us in regards to artists, inspiring, you know, because like my, uh, it was, my, it was my grandmother, my grandparents that encouraged me. You know, every time I, uh, my brothers and we would go over and stay with them because, you know, mom would work so grandma would uh, babysit us. She had uh, a big, that, uh, have you ever, what they used to have this, uh, we used to call it butcher paper, but white, but white, white kind of heavy. She, my grandfather somehow had a big roll of that. And, and my grandmother would cut us cut us off a piece, put us on the floor, and each each of my brothers, we had our own uh, cigar box with our own crayons separate so we wouldn't argue over who, you know. Oh, that's cool. We'd say, draw me something. And we would spend hours and hours, you know, when, when we were, you know, my youngest brother, he was still like only one year old, two year old, you know, because I was the oldest. So then he didn't hurry his, his – 
bunch of lines and scribbling. Yeah, <laughs> but she, and then she would take and cut them out and put them on the refrigerator, regardless of what it looked like. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Like she felt special. Yeah, and I, I mean, I remember that. From the time I always rem you know, remember that. And so later on when I wanted to, yeah, and my grandmother used to, uh, yeah, she was the one who told me before everybody else told me that I had a gift from God. I had a divine gift and uh, utilize it well, you know, to don't, don't be frivolous with it, you know. And, and so they were all the way, the whole time, all the way up to my teen years, they were, you know, encouraging me, you know, and uh, when I hear stories about other artists, you know, and, and uh, like last week, we were talking about Michelangelo, you know, his father was beating him, you know, because he didn't want, he was dueling in, in, in a class with <laughs> philosophy. Terrible. You know, he gave in. Think about how many more artists we would have in this world if the parents would just encourage, especially when you're little. When you're, you know, instead of getting it beat out of you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, my, when my daughters were little, I encouraged them, but then we went to, you know, I went to some separation. So by the time they got up, got, got to their teens, they just, you know, cause there was, there was nobody around to encourage them. And um, so I missed out on that. And, but they both have artistic talent of their own. My oldest daughter is photography and well, both of them are photography, especially my oldest one. My youngest one is in the cooking. She loves to bake fancy cakes and, you know, things. But there's an artistic nature to it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. She also likes making little crafts and things. So that's how she got my grandson started making these little little uh, uh, paper mache items. He was he went, he went from Legos to paper mache to drawing and she, yeah. So at least I, I have. Oh, I encouraged him so much. I told her, told him, I said, if I was there, you two would probably be artists. But <laughs> encourage, encourage your boys, encourage your son, because uh, you know, yeah, it's it's important. Because all children, I read somewhere that all children, when they're little, they haven't, they naturally are artistic. It's just a natural thing with humans. Yeah, well, it's, it's just somewhere along the line. Um you just either grow out of it or you have it beat out of you or discouraged out of you somehow, or you just grow out of it, you know, oh. but if you really have an artist spirit, you, you just always keep it, you know, it doesn't go away. My, uh, you know, uh, when I hear stories of, uh, yeah, so many times when, uh, so, well, you know, you, you can't make a living as an artist, you know, you can't. Yeah. That's what I was always told. Yeah. So they tried to send me to computer school. Oh my gosh. I can't <laughs> wrap my head around. That was back when it was DOS everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going DOS what? I went to night school trying to learn how to use <laughs> computer, how to learn how to do DOS. I was I went in there and I'm going, oh my gosh, somebody please stick a sharp <laughs> stick in my eye. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> oh man, that was so funny. <laughs> I ended up, uh, I didn't get into computers until I was uh, in the military, and then I discovered I had a bit of a talent for it, you know, so. Computers. A whole nother story, but. I could not wrap my mind around it. I was already so messed up by that age. It was just too, a little too late. <laughs> computers, because in programming, there's a certain amount of creativity, you know, and everything, and, and until, you know, I told you before, but until a few years ago when I, daughters we you know reestablish our relationship and they encouraged me to start drawing again i had 20 26 maybe 27 years you know i hadn't done anything with a pencil and paper or, or paintbrush or whatever but it was, i was still being creative I was with computers i was doing graphic art you know which uh, so you never I think i think as kid children we're naturally creative and that's you know, some of us develop into cooks or, some, you know, somebody else develops into some, like an architect, you know, mm -hmm. or I mean, there's, there's all different kinds of ways of, you know, yeah, versions yeah. of creativity. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, some yeah. are more encouraged than others <laughs> because you can make a better living maybe, but, um, you know. You know, it's, uh, 
it, that's what's called the creative, the creative arts, you know, the, mm-hmm. great. To, you know, I mean, yeah, it takes a lot of talent to decorate a cake. I mean, those people that make all those roses and all those little swirls and decorations on the cake. I, there's no, I mean, I've seen some elaborate cakes. Those things are elaborate. And nowadays, it's even more elaborate than it ever is. You, you can't even tell it's a cake but when they get done with some of those. They look like a big boombox radio or something like a bear or <laughs> something like that. It is so funny to talk you know, in conversations with my mother, you know, and she said, I don't know where you got it from, but I can't even draw a stick. I know you didn't get it from me. <laughs> said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Remember jigsaw puzzles? Well, yeah. I said, yeah. But then they used to get mad at me. I said, remember paint by numbers? And she goes, yeah, I remember you and my paint by numbers. She <laughs> <laughs> used to get angry at me because I would say, well, no, I don't want that color. Well, no, you it says number two. That's the color for number two. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I painted it the way I thought I was supposed to be. <laughs> I would blend them. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, okay, this color here, this color here. But no, I would try to, I wouldn't make them stay in the line. Sometimes I'd blend them just a little bit. <laughs> she always claimed she never had creativity, but she always had hobbies. She liked she liked to do yeah. really good paint by numbers, uh, puzzles, you know, jigsaw puzzles. And she used to do all things like that. And, and uh, you know, she she doesn't do it anymore because her, you know, her eyes, you know, uh, 80 years old. So, you know, her, her eyes bother her, you know, but, um, she still does, uh, puzzles, uh, we call the, the written puzzles in the book, you know, she does those sometimes. And so, you know, I told her, I said, mom, you're creative. I got some of those creative juices. Well, good luck to you. Cause I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And my daughters ask me, they want to know about their grandmother, you know, and I tell them, you know, and <laughs> grandma says, she ain't got no talent. She don't know where. So if you got any talent, you got it for me. So, well, that's what mom says. Cause yeah, their mother's the same way. Their mother was not. Oh my God. The, when I, uh, look at photographs, you know, my daughters, they always like to have their houses, you know, all, especially for the holidays, all decorated and everything. <laughs> that's my daughters. Because I remember, I couldn't say anything talking bad about my wife. But uh, she <laughs> no decorating sense whatsoever. <laughs> Some people just don't she do probably was all that. You know, she was probably creative in a different way. Yeah, you know? probably was. Yep. <clears throat> I mean, you have to like to do that in order to do it. If you don't, then it just doesn't, you just don't do it. Some people don't get excited about that. They know how to decorate and everything, like we've talked about. I have to be in the mood at Christmas time to do it. I mean, I've got the stuff to do it with, but I just have to be in the mood, especially since I've gotten older. <laughs> it's a lot of work to put all that stuff up and then tear it all down and put it away. My daughter's, you know, you know, little boy, boy, he is just, I keep teasing her. I said, he is going to have, when he starts walking, he is going to have a ball in your house because she has all these little figurines sitting around on the shelf. She likes to decorate with those. And he has already got his eye on one. one. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, he learned the word no real fast. <laughs> that's, that's the, uh, that's the creativity, you know? So yeah, they, you know, creative, you know, and everything. So, um, uh, I just hope my, uh, I know one grandson, he could be an artist if he put his mind to it. He's pretty good. And I'm hoping the new grandson, he'll, when he gets old enough to start, we'll see what, uh, okay. We got off the subject a little bit about phobism. <laughs> By myself, personally, I don't really, there's only one or two pieces of Matisse's work that I like. I really didn't, didn't care that, that much. Of course, I don't like that much modern art anyhow. So, you know. I really, it's impressionism and using color. I love color, so I really liked it. <laughs> his his later, later years, he, a lot, okay, he's known for his painting, but he's more known for his cutouts, cutout paper. Yeah, I saw those. Those are, I did not realize those were cutouts until I saw the, the yeah, video. Really mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and so, uh, you know, his, uh, his, 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 yeah, you know, all the way up until I guess he was, uh, you know, sick in bed. 
uh, he was still cutting out and had scissors and colored paper and he was, you know, with pen. Well, a lot of that came from working with his kids. His kids kind of got him back into, uh, he was kind of in a depression state for a while and work, and then he started basically just playing with his kids and they, you know, drawing and painting and stuff and he started seeing things through their eyes a little bit and so it, it kind of brought him back into, you know, being creative again and I think he started doing more of that cut out stuff after that. Yeah, but he, that became a really big, uh, a big, big thing, a big uh, genre for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, dug into that, you know. He's uh, noteworthy because he was the first, you know, he had the nerve, had the courage, you know. Like his uh, great granddaughter said, it seemed like the more he was told no, he was stubborn and he would do it. <laughs> well, who's have to the courage to stick to your, con- what do you call it, convictions? Yep. And his wife said that stood by him and encouraged him to paint the way he wanted to. I mean, yeah, it's got to be rough. But he ended up having to do quite a bit of work that just to, get some money coming in like he did quite a few still lives you know and flowers and things you know that was more closer to representational you know work just so he could sell them you know to uh of course by that time he was he was pretty much made a name for himself so anything matisse people were willing to buy yeah <laughs> yeah okay well, let's wrap this episode up you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 97 for May the uh, 17th. And my name is Clyde JKL, and we've been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. I'm going to say bye to uh, Diane and Constance. Uh, Diane, say goodbye to everybody. Hi, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, Constance. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening, folks. And if you find these podcasts interesting and enjoyable, please, as always, however you find us, give us a thumbs up, give us a star rating. We really appreciate it. Bye until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kemp. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kemp at w www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.